The Big Leap Book Summary by Gay Hendricks The Big Leap is a self-help book written by Gay Hendricks that focuses on the idea of achieving a state of personal excellence. The book suggests that many people have an upper limit problem that prevents them from achieving their full potential in various aspects of their lives, including work, relationships, and personal growth. Read Now to Overcome Today Did you dream of achieving a state of personal excellence when you were young? What happened to that childhood dream? Do you now face limitations of mind and resources? If these are your concerns, the answers to all these are just down below. Keep reading. Introduction Today we will talk about the book The Big Leap by Gay Hendricks. The Big Leap is a book about dreams and fears and how beating fears and self-imposed limits can make all those dreams come true. We recommend this read to people trying to find the direction of their lives or who are not satisfied with how life plays out so far and want to transform their reality. Chapter 1. Preparing for Your Big Leap in the early 19th century, engineers figured out how to use a steam engine without electricity, and thus, the steam engine was born. Previously, steam engines were used only for carrying goods, but later for transport as well. Friends, the invention of the steam engine happened because a person thought it was possible, and for that, he was always out of his comfort zone. But first, we must understand that a comfort zone is not a zone or place. Instead, it is such a physical and mental state in which a person becomes comfortable. And the most important is to be lazy. For example, if a man is doing a job, and he is not happy in that job, and he wants to do some business of his own, then he will leave it, but while doing this job, he has become so comfortable that now he is doing this job. So he wants to stay in the position. This is called the comfort zone. Some crucial points in this chapter are essential for us to understand and remember. 1. The comfort zone is not a place for achievers who want to build the life of their dreams. You must move out of your comfort zone to live your dreams or become a rich man. You will have to come out and work, or else your dream will remain a dream. Take the big leap. Two big questions can get an enormous reward. Here, the prize means knowledge, which means that the more critical questions you ask, the better you will get the answer or the more valuable questions you ask. Only applicable, you will get the answer. 3. When we achieve the next level of success, the upper bound problem leads us to think we don't deserve it and return to where we were before. When we work hard for something, nature always takes us one step ahead, the human mind always seeks comfort, so when its level increases, it has to work harder than before. 4. Your addiction to rest wants you to stay in your comfort zone. If you start taking more rest than you need, it cannot be suitable for you. Because once you get addicted to rest, you will find every comfort, ultimately, your comfort zone will become be created. Chapter 2. Making the Leap Marianne Williamson has a long and quite famous example that our worst fear is not a failure but of whether or not we will be able to do this. It is. Or, if put, there is no confidence, if you know and believe you can always increase your capability, then you have no excuse not to do that work. Because fear is not something you can completely rid yourself of, Hendricks cites the example of German psychologist Fritz Perls and suggests breathing it in, saying that fear is nothing without the breath. Not there. Usually, when we are afraid, our breath becomes short. You can take back control by breathing slowly and deeply to counter this. And if you do it consistently, it will increase your confidence. Some crucial points in this chapter are essential for us to understand and remember. One giant leaps in one area of life with big setbacks and another area to follow. This means that when you focus on something, you will lose your life if you give less time to work. So work can be wrong but it does not mean we should leave all our work and focus on one thing. We must keep in mind that we do only one thing at a time. Take the big leap. Two behind every communication problem is a tough 10-minute conversation you want to avoid having. Whenever you start a new job or anything new, if you do, you become your teacher and start handling things according to your own accord, and when any problem comes, you do not know what to do, and these problems go because you ask someone for it. 
So don't take advice, consult someone and start if you want this problem not to come. 3. When big things arise in your relationship, ask your partner if they'd be willing to join you as an equal partner in the learning journey. Friends, here Hendricks writes these lines for those people who are married or in a relationship with someone. They say that when you tell your partner about your goals or dreams, how does he respond to you? 4. If HE responds well, it means he wants to see your progress. When he answers, ask him if he will support you in this learning journey. Hendrix is here just explaining that you are your life. So whoever is with you, whether he is capable of keeping you or not, if he really wants to help you, then he will never stop you from moving forward and will always be learning with you. Take the big leap. Chapter 3, Getting Specific Hendrix says that work should not look like work in real. But you will be surprised to know that only 5% of people in the world do their job with heart. This is because most people get to know after the age of 25 to 28 what their passion is. Because before the age of 25, those people were doing what their parents used to explain to their teachers, they studied in college what their friends did, they did the same job that their friends did, and they never talked about themselves. And when they think about themselves, it is too late, friends, this is called walking in sheep's movement. It would help if you worked in what Hendrix calls your zone of genius. A zone of genius is not a place, it is the mental state when you are most productive. And a person is most productive only when working on his mind. That's why Hendrix says that you should do what you feel like. Forced work is always wrong. Some crucial points in this chapter are essential for us to understand and remember. One worrying is a sign that we are not working on something important. We worry about any work only when we postpone that work at the last minute, and when the deadline is reached, then worry and then leave that work by hitting some excuse, we have to understand this here. By making excuses or postponing work, no one else will have to do that work, we will still have to do that work, but now we will be worried about that work. And then, even if we don't want to, we have to work now. The best solution to this problem is to come out of your comfort zone and eliminate the laziness inside you. Too worrying applies only when we can do something about a subject. Hendricks says it is madness to worry unnecessarily, as though you may never have night or summer may never come, and then on to the topic. So worry, it will be utterly senseless because it is nature, and no one can change it. So it's useless to worry but it is essential to worry about your work and career because that will make you successful. But here, Hendrix once said with great emphasis that nothing would happen just by worrying, we have to take action because if everything were done by thinking, then today, every person in the world would be rich. 3. If you stop worrying, your life can change overnight. Here, Hendrix says that if you stop worrying, you can change your life. Still, it does not mean you should be careless, friends, or fear. There is a minimal difference in carelessness, which we must consider, it will be called carelessness if we do not take action after worrying. We should not worry. Instead, we start taking action. Take the big leap. Chapter 4, Building a New Home in Your Zone of Genius As we have understood, the zone of genius is that mental state where you become a genius in your work. Hendricks explains some steps to achieve the zone of genius, let's understand them. 1. Zone of Incompetence You must suck at work because many people can do it better than you. Understand that we have to stick to our work, which means we have to do it perfectly, because if we want to be a genius in our work, then we have to say the same. Otherwise, other people do better than us. 2. Zone of Competence You're alright but many others cope better. In the zone of competence, we understand that you have learned to work hard at work, but now that work can be done even better, you do not have to be satisfied. Because a person who is satisfied with his growth stops, he will now be counted among the average people. 3. Zone of Genius You're the best in the world at it. If you follow these steps, you will come in the above 1-2% to of people who are becoming genius in their work but if you keep learning things continuously, and if you keep implementing them in your life, you will remain in the zone of genius. 
otherwise, someone else will come to your place. Take the big leap. Chapter 5. Living in your zone of genius. How to stay in the zone of genius will be when many people would like to fall and give negative thoughts, but you will have to stay in your zone. To remain living in the zone of genius, for this, Hendricks tells some crucial points in this chapter, let us understand them. 1. Think outside the box and take action on them. Hendricks says that when he used to work in a company, he had a friend, who wanted to do a lot in life and had perfect ideas, but he used to get what others were getting because he did not take action and only used to talk. 2. From this story, Hendricks wants to tell us that everyone makes good plans and thoughts but if we do not take action on them, then nothing will happen. Therefore, action will also have to be taken on your plans. Take the big leap. 3. Learn the art of meditation and never let go of your good thoughts. The art of meditation means we have to learn to be focused. We have to stay away from our distractions. Maximum times, we get distracted by things. The best thing to avoid this is the timetable or schedule, in your timetable, every small and big activity, from sleeping to getting up. Write, and fix a time for everything, and do not repeat one thing more than once a day, do not give yourself more than 45 minutes for entertainment. Otherwise, you will not feel like getting up. For here, Hendrix teaches one more thing, do not let your thoughts go out of your mind, for this, the author tells note-making. He says that you should always keep a small diary with you, in which as soon as any good plan or thought comes to your mind, then write it quickly in that diary so that you will not forget those good plans or thoughts. He also says that when you write down something, the chances of that work being done increase a lot. 5. Motivate yourself Whatever person you are at the top of that field, you should be inspired by them, follow them, try to understand them and find out what mistake they made at the start of their career you should have made that mistake. And most importantly, understanding their ideology means their mindset. Take the big leap. Chapter 6. Living Einstein Time Living in Einstein's time does not mean that you go to the time of Einstein, it means that he was the best scientist in the time of Einstein. In the same way, do something big in your time. Hendricks gives the example of Einstein because he is still remembered in the world because of his works. Hendricks follows the ideology of Einstein. He says that Einstein got the Nobel Prize in science because of his hard work. If you work hard, you will also be successful soon. Some crucial points in this chapter are essential for us to understand and remember. 1. You must update yourself with the times to move forward in your life and function properly. There's a lot of power in time, it can make and break someone, we have to adapt ourselves to new things with time and learn them. 2. Let us learn it with the help of an example. When the smartphone came to India, people did not like it much, they said that who would keep such a big and big phone, maybe this was the reason that it took some time for the smartphone to come to India, but after a few years, it demands so prominent in the Indian market that today it is the biggest market. Take the big leap. 3. And now, there will be hardly anyone who does not have a smartphone, you may also be reading this summary on your phone itself, in the same way, before COVID people were afraid of online payment or banking, but as COVID came, the government asked for cashless contact, people started net banking, and now every other payment is made online. All these examples tell us that we should update ourselves with time. Forgetting the proper sense of timing will reduce your stress. From this line, we understand that our tension will work with the correct understanding of time, but this does not mean we must read books to understand time. Understanding time here means understanding the importance of time and taking control of your time. You ask any successful person, they know every hour of their day what is being said because they divide their time and manage it. If you also want to move forward, you should know how to manage your time. 5. To get Einstein's time we must utilize 100% of our time. Hendricks says he met many prominent people in his life, but he liked one thing about the founder of the Dell company, Mitchell Dell, which he went further in his life. He says that Michael Dell knew the value of his time, so the part of his day he used to give for the meetings, he focused only on the meeting and only on the meeting. If Einstein is having a meeting, 
he will not do any other work at that time, even if it is drinking tea. This made Hendricks understand that Michael Dell never multitasked. Having to work more than that, Michael Dell doesn't multitask, so he uses 100% of his time. If you also want to make full use of your time, you should also not multitask and do only one task at a time with full focus. Chapter 7 Solving the Relationship Problem In this chapter, Hendricks explains how to build a healthy relationship with someone and take that relationship forward. He also explains to us that a relationship is not always the same when you are with a boy or a girl. Take the big leap. Build a relationship with yourself. When you do business, you also have to make a good relationship with your partners so that the work goes well for a long time. Some crucial points in this chapter are essential for us to understand and remember. Who is right? Who is wrong? It often happens whenever there is a relationship between two people. When there is a fight, they blame each other and do not think about the problem in reality. All this happens because of our ego. A person thinks, why should I say sorry to someone? Why should I bow down in front of someone? In today's generation, this problem has become widespread. One partner considers himself slash herself the greatest, some people do not understand their parents. This does not mean that you ignore the mistakes of others and always bow down to others, your job is to solve the problem. Understand and solve it well, not just whose fault it is to keep fighting. Healthy relationships exist only between equals. Hendricks understands that a good relationship, no matter who it is with, is successful only when giving and taking from both sides because only one person will do everything. That would not be called any relationship. A healthy relationship will be formed only when you work together, for example, if you are in partnership with someone in business, if you see the work of sales, your partner wants to see the work of manufacturing. So, both of you can grow the company together. Hendricks says that he has met many prominent people in his long career, and the most common problem among them is that they cannot coordinate with each other, it is a lack of communication. For this, you can practice an exercise. Different work should be given to your partner than the work assigned to you so that you do not interfere in their work and they should not interfere in your work, and in the end, both of you give a report of your work. It will turn out that they did their work in their own way, and you did your job in your way. When you do two different things in the same way, the company will grow. Conclusion Friends, we learn from the Big Leap book that we should use 100% of our time because the 24 hours of energy we got today will not be available tomorrow. We learn that we should manage our time, we should make our zone of genius, to maintain our relations with others, we should give and take. And the most important lesson that we learn from this book is that to do something big, we have to take action on our thoughts and leave our comfort zone. The Big Leap Book Review The Big Leap by Gay Hendricks is an insightful and practical guide for achieving greater success and happiness by identifying and overcoming self-imposed limitations. Hendricks in The Big Leap explains how our fears of success, self-doubt, and negative beliefs can hold us back and provides powerful tools for breaking free from these patterns. With a clear writing style and engaging anecdotes, the book offers actionable advice for creating a life of abundance and fulfillment. Overall, The Big Leap is a must-read for anyone looking to unlock their full potential and live their best life. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like and share. See you in next videos.